Good morning and greetings to all in Jesus' name. What a joy to be back again. It's my privilege, it's my honor to introduce our speaker for the day. Once again, Pastor Nikki Raiborde. Uh, as I introduced him yesterday, I mentioned about uh, uh, this the simplicity with which he brings the the scriptures, the word of God and the relevance and how true that was if you were present yesterday. And if you're here for the first time uh, this morning, I just want to uh, introduce Pastor Nikki once again. Pastor Nikki is known for bringing God's word powerfully and uh, he teaches the uncompromised word of God. He's passionate as he teaches and serves the Lord. It's, it's, it's our privilege and honor to be associated and continue to associate with him closely uh, for the past uh, 17 years. And we thank God for bringing him into our lives and uh, speaking prophetically uh, into our lives uh, 18 years ago. And the Lord opened a door that brought us here into the Middle East and we've been blessed uh, and the Lord used him Pastor Nikki was raised in a pastoral home. His parents uh, brought him up in the ways of the Lord. And uh, at a very early age, at 17, uh, he heard the call from the Lord and uh, stepped uh, and launched out by faith. He has traveled over 75 nations. He has authored uh, many of books and he keeps teaching God's word uh, and teaching uh, also in Bible colleges in Singapore, in the UK, and in many other nations. Uh, I am so blessed to learn from his life too, as he strikes an amazing balance in being a, a shepherd, a lead pastor, as well as an international uh, preacher and a minister of the word. Uh, he is very down to earth, simple, and yet uh, that which he shares is absolutely profound. So with that, uh, we counted a privilege as he pastors uh, a church in South Carolina, Lexington, United States, uh, which has been making such a wonderful impact uh, in his uh, community, in his state, in uh, various states around the, the, uh, the United States and in the nations of the world. With that, uh, I call on Pastor Nikki to take over this session and uh, the next session too, but then we'll have a break in between. Over to Pastor Nikki, let's put our hands together and just welcome this amazing man of God. Over to you, Pastor Nikki. Thank you so much, Pastor Donald. Thank you. Well, it's been a, really a great time uh, yesterday, uh, just starting off the conference Thrive. And, and first of all, I want to say, uh, you know, to all the people who are uh, working behind the scenes, you know, to make this conference happen. There's a lot of people who are actually making sure that everything runs smoothly. And so I think so far, you know, this has been like a really amazing. It has been really seamless. Sometimes I know in the back end, there's a lot of things happening. It doesn't seem seamless, but uh, listen, for our side, it's been like really good. And not just that, the natural side of it, when the natural side of it works properly also, uh, the spiritual side of it, we experience the presence of God, we experience uh, just clarity uh, in us connecting to God. So all the people who are working behind the scenes to make everything happen, I just want to say thank you and I want to say that, hey, you are doing an amazing job. You are doing an amazing job. Uh, again, Pastor Donald, thank you so much for having me uh, for this conference and, and uh, allowing me to just bring uh, God's word. Uh, of course, Pastor Don and Pastor Nita, they've been very close uh, to me and in my family. And uh, not just that, um, uh, you know, there are very few people, you know, I travel a lot. Um, and there are very few people that you meet uh, that as soon as you meet, you instantly connect. And and, and sometimes, you know, uh, for me, I think we have to hold ourselves back. Uh, otherwise, when we get together, we talk and we talk and we talk and we talk and and then we talk, and, and then we talk, and, and then we talk, and we can just, we just have we, we just enjoy, and so that's something only uh, God can do to knit hearts together. And so I just so appreciate uh, Pastor Donald, Pastor Nita, and and just also um, uh, you know uh, seeing the church, seeing the leadership, even over the years, uh, people coming together, working together to expand what God has 
uh, mm. given to them you know so all the leadership at saving grace you know and i'm just so proud um, um, to see what god is doing among you and every time you know i i say this almost every time that even when i come to dubai you know i just see a progression i just see a progressiveness you're not at the in a stuck place you're always progressing and going forward and so i'm just so happy today also to uh, just join you in in and especially in this thing that you're doing um with the thrive conference online um so i'm going to get right into the word of god um yesterday um you know we began the series uh, on thrive from psalm 92 and and every time that i speak in some kind of series i always like to kind of go back and review i know it was only yesterday it's not been a week or two weeks just yesterday but but for me i always like to uh, review and always like to kind of uh, go that direction but i want to say to you listen god wants you to thrive in life i don't give this in your marriage with your relationships that are there around you in your church life uh, in your business in your work life in every area God wants you to progress. God wants you to move forward. God wants you to really see the things that he has put inside of your life come to fruition. You know, I'm just reminded of a story very quickly as we get into God's word. You know, some years ago, the scientists um they wanted to know what causes a, a caterpillar to turn into a butterfly. What is it that that causes a caterpillar to turn into a butterfly? and then they discovered that in a caterpillar there's a certain hormone when that hormone is there that hormone is the deciding factor between uh, from them changing or transforming from a, a caterpillar to a butterfly and, and so they wanted to do some tests and and research and and this is what they did they took five caterpillars okay and what they did is they lined them up one behind each other okay and in the front one they took out the hormone they took out the hormone from the front one the all the other four behind that one were just following and any they were probably going on circles and things like that and they found out after some time that the first one did not have the hormone but the rest four had the hormone but surprisingly they found out that none of the uh, none of the caterpillars turned to butterfly and so they did the second thing now this time what they did is they took again a different five set of uh, caterpillars and then they put the hormone or left the hormone not put but left the hormone in the first caterpillar and then the rest of the four caterpillars they took out the hormone and so they left it like that and all the four followed the one who had the hormone and after some time to their shock and surprise all five of the caterpillars turned to butterfly i mean only the lead caterpillar had the hormone the rest of them did not but they were following the lead caterpillar who had the hormone and therefore all of them turned into butterflies here's what i want to say to you you might be a person and you say you know what like you know i don't have anything happening in my life i'm not smart i'm too fat i'm too skinny you got probably a thousand and one excuses or you say well i why you are not thriving in life listen i want to say to you listen if you follow the lord jesus christ he is the person with all the hormones <laughs> he is the person with all the things that you need whether it is for your marriage whether it is for your business whether it is to live life victorious the bible says it is he who leads us into triumphant victory and so you following jesus everything that is deficient everything that is absent everything you say you know what i don't have this and i don't have that and i don't have a proper education and and, and i don't have the proper connections and i don't have the open door and, and listen in following jesus listen you might be deficient but he is all sufficient you might be deficient but he is all sufficient and in following him we become like him he is the victorious one he has conquered sin he has conquered death he is became victorious and sitting at the right hand of the father and when we follow him we go from defeat to victory we go from bondage to freedom we go from a place of fear in our life to walking by faith why all because of who you are following and therefore with great boldness we can say to you listen you can thrive in life 
you cannot just survive but thrive in life why because you have the model you have the example you have the person that you are following and that is the lord jesus christ and therefore yesterday as we began uh, this series on on thrive we start with psalm 92 because psalm 92 says is the righteous thrive like the palm tree they grow like the cedar a tree in lebanon and like this verse 30 it says planted in the house of the lord they thrive in the courts of our god they will still bear fruit in old age healthy and green i told you another translation you know it uses a, a different word it says they shall be fat and green you know i like that I, like i said yesterday i want to put t-shirts you know fat and green people not, might not understand that but but i like that you know in other words we looked at yesterday third john 1 2 is beloved i pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper we looked at the word prosper yesterday which means to succeed to reach your destination to fulfill purpose to receive fruit for sowing to have vision to see clearly to reach intended goal to finish well i mean you look at all those definitions <laughs> don't tell me you don't want that in your life that's what thriving is that's what prospering is is to succeed is to reach the destination is to fulfill god's purpose for your life is to receive fruit for all the labor that you are doing is to have vision to see clearly to reach your intended goal and yesterday i asked you to you know begin to ponder some questions questions like am i genuinely challenged and fulfill in life i mean am i happy or am i just like <laughs> grumpy every day complaining whining through life and nothing ever good happens to me and blah 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 well you might need to get into god's word god's word and allow him to speak and change and remove some toxins in your life am i living consistently and and and, and putting investment for god's assignment am i consistently investing in God's assignment for my life. I mean everything that I'm doing for my time, for my money, for my resources, is it an investment of what God has assigned for my life? Number 3 is the direction my life is taking an indicator of God given vision. I mean if people look at my life and say, you know what? Hey, I'm watching you. I'm seeing everything. Your life is really about God's vision for your life. It's not about sports. It's not about you know movies. It's not about th- th- you are doing what God had in mind for you to do. And again, it could be sport. It could be thing. But is it what God had you for uh, for, uh, for you? You know. And so the fourth question is: There freshness, innovation, and are people challenged? I mean, when people get around me, are they inspired? When people get around me, hey, is there innovation? Is there creativity? You know, what's the message my radio is sending out daily? You see, what do you mean? What message do people get when they hang around me? Why? Because that's where my life is going, and and am I doing something that I can do without? One of the ways to thrive in life is first of all stop doing stuff that you can do without. There are a lot of people that are doing stuff. They're busy. but ineffective there's a lot of stuff going on but it really is not going anywhere and so one of the things you can do start by is just simply stopping some things that you can really do without you know we looked at another scripture verse in Ephesians chapter number 5 it says look carefully then how you walk live purposefully and worthily and accurately i mean i would encourage you to memorize this scripture why it will help you stay in alignment you know i like one of my favorite scriptures it is live purposefully live worthy of the assignment that god has called you live accurately that means hey precisely in life not like a scientist experimenting maybe i'll do this maybe i'll do that no live accurately as not as the unwise and the witless but the wise sensible intelligent intelligent people making the most of your time and lastly uh yesterday we began to base our our, our foundation on, on this scripture verse the bible says my child never forget never sorry drift of course from these two goals in your life to walk in wisdom and to discover discernment to walk in wisdom and to discover discernment why because hey they will empower you 
they will strengthen you from inside out they will inspire they'll energize they'll refresh they'll bring healing to you they'll give you a living hope they'll guide you he say you'll even rest at, i mean you will sleep without taking any pills you can sleep at night <laughs> it won't raise your blood pressure he said because god is your confidence in times of crisis i mean no amount of pandemic will raise your blood pressure he said you'll keep your heart at rest in every situation i want to tell you that is god's promise for you that is god's promise for you now yesterday we looked at this and then what we did is we went to the book of proverbs now i'm going to say something now for the next few moments maybe i'll try to hurry up with with this next few my point but every time that i teach and i preach i always like to also say something that maybe you'll learn something that hopefully that you'll take something and go dig deeper later on so i was going to drop something in while i'm preaching and then kind of move forward now here is my uh, something that i want to drop for you to maybe go and and research it uh, a little bit later now when you study the book of proverbs there are what we what i call seven types of proverbs okay and let me just walk you through it very quickly i won't take much time and i know sometimes but maybe it is boring but but hopefully it's not a boring and so there are seven types of proverbs let me explain to you why we are we are doing this okay so let's go first and let me just kind of outline the seven types of proverbs you know? the number one the first type of proverb is what we call a synonymous proverb we know the word synonym refers to that uh, two words which have biblical same meaning okay it's a synonymous that means the when you see a proverb they're usually in two lines that means the first and the second they are matching for example proverbs 11:25 it says the liberal soul shall be made fat and then it says he that watereth shall be watered also and so it basically it means hey the liberal soul that means the person who who gives shall be made fat he that watereth shall also what and so those both the lines they basically are the same except they're communicating two different images but the theme is the same it's called synonymous proverbs okay number 2 we find that the second type of proverbs is what we call anti theatrical pro- uh, uh, proverb what does that mean that means simply this if you do such and such you will be blessed if you don't this is what will happen so when you read proverbs there are type of proverbs that tells you hey do this you'll get blessed don't do it <laughs> you pay a penalty for it like proverbs 14:30 he says a sound heart is life to the flesh but envy rotten's <laughs> the bones and so listen listen you want to have a healthy body make sure your heart is healthy first <laughs> why and it's not talking about just you know your cholesterol levels is not just talking about don't eat fried food but you you can you you can be a guy who like we heard past slip yesterday you can be a guy who literally takes care of your body and still die young and still have a lot of issues why because it's not separate the spirit the soul and the body they are connected we must make sure that we are walking in health spirit soul and body you know and so this is what we call antithetical problem which simply means if you do such and such you get blessed if you don't this is the price you're going to pay and so when there are scriptures in the book of proverbs hey they're actually giving you something they're telling you some wisdom that is there the third type of proverb is what we call a synthetic proverb it's a term used to identify with both lines seem to express two totally different thoughts okay but they have the common theme it's two different thoughts but common theme like proverbs 10:18 he that hideth hated with lying lips and he that uttereth a slander he says these two things is the same thing he's a fool <laughs> you know and so when you got hate but but you speak nice words and somebody who's a slanderer somebody who just cuts people down is is the same they both are fools and so a synthetic proverb simply means is that both lines are communicating the same thought the fourth type of proverb is what we call an integral proverb okay in this type of proverb what begins to happen is this that the effect is produced in one continuous line without interpretation for example proverbs chapter 13 verse 14 the law of the wise is fountain of life to depart from the snares of death here the second line completes or complements the first line it says the law of the wise is the fountain of life 
what does it do it, 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 it helps you to depart from the snares of death it says hear counsel and receive instruction that thou may be wise in their later years all that simply means if you see people in their own age bearing fruit like psalm 92 says is because in the younger years they received counsel and they obeyed instructions they were not living life in a sense of just rebellion so it's called an integral proverbs now what you could do is maybe take some if you if you use a, a regular bible as far as a paper bible or an ipad or a, you know you could do it in different different colors and so you you could do it as a study you know you could go through the book of proverbs and highlight it say you know what oh that's the integral proverb hey that's a synthetic uh, proverb you know and it'll help you understand to create a theme now why am i doing this well i'll tell you in just a moment but let me just walk you through the the fifth type the fifth type of a uh, parable is what we call a parabolic proverb here the first line is an analogy and the second line is a teaching for example proverbs chapter 11 verse 22 as a jewel of gold in a swine's snot that's the image that's the analogy and the teaching is so is a fair woman who is without discretion <laughs> proverbs 25 25 as cold water to a thirsty soul so is good news from a far country proverbs 26 20 where no wood is the fire goeth out so where there is no tell bearer the strife ceases and so the first line is always an analogy the second line is the teaching now you say why is that important again when you if you have a, hi- a highlighter or you can highlight if you just do the, each one of them in different colors you will find how many teachings and how many analogies there are outlined in the whole book of proverbs that's almost like a teaching and so when you see something in chapter 1 see chapter 7 see chapter number 8 uh, chapter number 18 you'll see a thought that is being brought out in that whole book it's almost like a a teaching with with different uh, <laughs> points in it in the number 6 the sixth type of proverbs is what we call a, a comparative proverb a comparative proverb is one which compares one thing with another to illustrate a common uh, trait for example now <laughs> i'm sorry so, so some of these are very <laughs> harsh proverbs a continual dropping in a very rainy season or any day and a contentious woman are alike <laughs> better is a little with the fear of the lord than great treasure and trouble <laughs> there with and then so what is trying to do is here is very simple it's trying to compare one thing to illustrate a common theme okay and lastly is what we call a reflective proverb a reflective all its wisdom that comes from observation is the ability to see the ways of life is to gain insight to point to strategies and so many times wisdom is there to give us strategies of what to do for example the bible says proverbs chapter number 6 go to the ant okay and actually it's very harsh it says something like this it says go to the ant you sluggard i didn't say that that's what the bible says you know go to the ant you sluggard consider her ways wise and so the bible calls this what we call a reflective proverb bible calls it go study the ant and when you study the ant consider his ways and you will become wise and that's why yesterday i picked a portion found in the book of proverbs chapter number 30 verse 18 and 19 he says there are three things that are too wonderful for me four which i don't understand is the way of an eagle in the air the way of the serpent on a rock the way of a ship in the midst of the sea and a way of a man with a virgin and so this is what we call a reflective proverb is we are looking if we are considering its ways why so we can gain some strategies why do we need strategies in order to go from a to b in life in order to go from a place of survival to thriving in life it will go from survival to revival in in life and so we need wisdom we need wisdom that comes in form of strategy what do i need to do not everything is in the foundation yes we read the word yes we pray yes we fast but after those things we need some strategies we need some simple thing hey this is what i can do 
this is what I can put my hands to. This is what I can implement in my life in order to go forward. And so the writer of Proverbs says, hey, listen, this is a reflective proverb. He says, observe the eagle. Observe the serpent and the rock. Observe the ship in the midst of the sea. Observe a man with a virgin and you will gain wisdom and you will gain some strategies. And that's why we yesterday, we kind of talked about the eagle. And I told you these four things yesterday, the way of an eagle in the air. It is the eagle, of course, is the believer. The air is the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's the spirit-filled life. How do we walk in the spirit-filled life? We learn some peace from the eagle, how to renew ourselves that we need to learn to walk alone, that we need to uh, uh, learn to have vision and, and things like that. Secondly, the way of a serpent upon the rock. Of course, the serpent is Satan. Rock is Jesus, okay? It's Christ and Satan. I mean, it, it, the main theme is you learn spirit-led warfare, okay? Why? Because every day is a day of warfare. You have opposition that is there. Why? Because Jesus said, I've come to give you life. But listen, there's a Satan who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what we're going to talk about in this session very quickly. But let me just go through it very quickly. The way of a ship in the midst of an ocean. The ship represents the church. Ocean represents, or sea represents the world. What is our responsibility as a church in the world? And I think we will look at that hopefully uh, in our next session. And the way of a man with a virgin, of course, the man is a believer, you, uh, sorry, a man is, is Jesus and a virgin is you and me, the church. And so we look at that relationship of intimacy. But what I want to do for the next few moments very quickly is walk you through the second one today. Christ and Satan, spirit-led warfare, spirit-led warfare, because whether you like it or not, we are in a war daily. We are in a war daily. Whether you like it or whether you want it or not, whether you choose to get out of your bed and, and live life, doesn't matter. You are at war. Okay. The Bible says this in the Paul writing to Timothy. Timothy, know this. Know this. That you are a soldier in the army of God. So don't get entangled in worldly affairs. Think like a soldier daily. And so I want to give you some warfare wisdom. Okay. Learning from, in a sense, the serpent and the rock, Satan and Christ and their warfare, some keys. And, and as I do this, I found this to be very interesting. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of uh, pull this on the screen for a moment. It's the what we call the Mariana snail fish. Now, this fish lives very deep in the ocean. I mean, it's so down that even divers really cannot go to it because of the pressure of water. The temperature there is freezing. There is no light in that kind of depth. This fish possesses a special feature called the flexible skull and bones. They also produce a distinct chemical that stabilizes their constitution. Why? So that the pressure inside of them is greater than the pressure outside of them. The only way they can go so deep is because that small chemical is produced inside of them so that the pressure inside is greater than the pressure outside. Therefore, they are not destroyed. Now, if you and me went in that water and we, it doesn't matter what kind of mass, this, that oxygen we put on and we go that down, you will die. Why? Because of the pressure. First of all, the weight of the water. First of all, the pressure will kill. But this fish does not. Why? Because that small chemical it releases, okay, sorry, a chemical release, it builds pressure inside that is greater than outside. And here's what I want to say to you. Paul says to Timothy something like this. Paul says, I thank Jesus, my Lord, who had made me equal to the task. That means, hey, listen, there is nothing that the enemy can throw at you. There is no pressure that you're going to face in the world. There is nothing that can come against you that you are not made to handle it. If I can say it like this, like the snail fish, 
God has released some chemicals inside of you by the word and by the Holy Spirit. And so it doesn't matter what's coming at you. doesn't matter you're, you're, you're surrounded on every side. The Bible says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. doesn't matter what's been thrown at you, how people treat you. Maybe the whole government is against you. Maybe your whole nation is against you. I mean, can you imagine David in the Bible? David in the Bible, you know, he just didn't have an enemy. Goliath was just one time in his life, but he had a whole nation. I mean, Saul was the king with his whole army. If at that time they had an army, they had an air force, they had a, a, a whatever, a, a navy. I mean, it was like that. The whole nation was against David. Now, I know that the whole nation is not against you. you know? But even if it is... <laughs> Listen, God has made you equal to the task. The greater is in you than he that is in the world. You know, God has guaranteed victory and not defeat for you. And so I want to just kind of give you some wisdom keys for the next few moments. Why? Because you and me, we are called to thrive in life. We are called to be victorious. And we can look at the warfare principles from the serpent and the rock, Satan and his war with Jesus. And so let me just say some things to you to help you in your journey. Okay. As you say this, let me say this. The enemy, the enemy is after three things in your life. If you can get to these three things, it affects everything else in your life. That means every problem in marriage, every problem in finance, every problem in backsliding, every problem comes down to the root in these three things. If you can fix these three things, listen, the outworking of it can be fixed. The enemy is after three things. Number one, he is after your identity. Identity. Not just natural, okay, but who you are in Jesus Christ, spiritual. Now, in the world today, everybody is battling an identity crisis. You know, beginning with the natural here in America, I mean, and of course, around the world, people are fighting whether I'm a man or I'm a woman or I'm a it or I'm a water. And then, and then in the recent reports, I heard that now there are like 57 different genders, no longer just male and female. Why? Because the enemy has come in and confused and, 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 and literally made something that God has created filthy. And so people are like confused about who they are. And guess what? It's the same thing spiritually. People are confused. Why? Because the enemy has come in and got a foothold in their life and people don't know who they are. And so the enemy has come after their identity. Number two, what the enemy is after is after intimacy with God. Intimacy. Listen, I want to say to you, in order for you to thrive in life, you can have intimacy with God. This is what the Bible says. God says this. He says, listen, let me see your face. There are a lot of people who don't want to see your face, but God wants to see your face. He says, let me hear your voice. He says, God wants to hear you. God wants to be intimate. God wants to share his heart. God wants to do things with you in life. He doesn't want to have a hierarchy relationship. He wants you to have, he said, he's made you co-laborer, joint heirs that the Bible says. He made you joint heirs. He wants you to have intimacy with him. But the enemy is after identity. The enemy is after intimacy. And the enemy is after your inheritance. There are things that Jesus, not only because he has died on the cross, not only for your sin, not only to, 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 to uh, make you uh, so to pay the penalty for your sins, but there are as inheritance, the things that belong in the kingdom of God. God says, listen, I want to share the resources, the, 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 in a sense, the stuff in the Father's house with you. And listen, what the enemy is after is your inheritance. There are things that belong in the kingdom. And the enemy says, you can't have it. Listen, you can you can have identity. You can know who you are in the design and who God made you to be. You can have intimacy with God and you can have the resources of the kingdom of God. There are people who are working 80 and 100 hours a week trying to get money, trying to get this, trying to survive in life. Listen, you don't have to survive. You can thrive in life. 
God has programmed you to prosper in life. Now remember we started you know on this spot I just thought of that illustration of the caterpillar you know we started why because I want to look at Jesus very quickly. If you remember the story that when Jesus went and was baptized by John the Baptist I I want to just take you to that incident very quickly. As he's getting baptized the Bible says this suddenly the heavens open and a voice from heaven said this is my son whom i love him i am well pleased now this is part of identity nikki what do you mean by identity identity means that you have acceptance with god for example to jesus the father says you are my son and as he says to jesus he says to each one of you you are my son you are my daughter <laughs> it says whom i love it's affection identity requires acceptance it requires affection jesus father says to jesus i love you and can i say to you my dear friend god loves you he's got eyes towards you he wants you he desires you he enjoys you he has affection for you identity requires affirmation it says in whom with whom i am well pleased i want to say to you today listen god is pleased with you god is don't believe the lies of the devil god is pleased with you now now here here's the thing whenever something is made public whenever a revelation is given guess what that revelation will be tested it will be tested and so suddenly jesus received that revelation what revelation identity you are my son identity has accepted affection affirmation okay <laughs> jesus received that. what happened he is going to get tested as soon as this happened he comes out of the water guess what happened he goes for 40 days in the wilderness And so I want to just take you to that place very quickly in the book of Matthew chapter number 4 and of course I'm sure each one of you you are familiar with the portion of scripture and so I'm just going to kind of skip through it and just uh, say this okay but, but remember Jesus is fasting 40 days in the wilderness and Satan comes the serpent comes to the rock and the first thing he says if you are the son of god now can you believe the nerves of the devil <laughs> just yesterday the heavens opened the dove came the father spoke and what did he say <laughs> this is my son i mean he made a public declaration to the world this is my son satan comes and says in verse 3 if you are the son then command these stones if you are the son then throw yourself down and let the angels come and take care of you <laughs> he challenges the very identity that the father made public and i want to say to you any time you receive a revelation from the word of god by the holy spirit in your life it will get tested it will get tested it will get tested why because remember this he's after your identity he's after your intimacy he's after your inheritance and you can't allow the enemy to come and manipulate you and get you right out of the word of god you got to stick your whole body and life and spirit in the word and say hey this is what the word of god says of who i am of what i can have and so i say something like this that there are three things that is what i call the performance trap what is the performance trap performance trap says i am what i do this is what satan did with jesus hey if you are the son of god then do this if you can turn stones into bread then listen you are not defined by what you do you are defined by who god calls you to be but it's a performance step 
and people live their life performing to kind of prove their identity and so <laughs> we always tell our identity who are you i got a phd in such and such who are you i'm a dentist who are you i'm a doctor no no i didn't ask you what you did i asked you who you are and it's so sad that we have taken our life and put it in what we do people ask me who are you i am nikki no 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 i mean like like like, like who are you i'm a Mickey. No, no. I thought you were pastor. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That's what I do. That's just one of the many things I do. Pastor is not my identity. There's only one thing that I do. I do many other things. So don't put me in a box. <laughs> But people have such a problem with their identity, and so they take a box and want to jump in that box and say, "I'm a nurse. I'm an architect. I'm, you know, it's a performance trap." you are not defined by what you do is the possession step i am what i own you know is 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 satan saying to jesus okay is satan saying to jesus if you fall down and worship me i will give you this is what i own and you can now own it and and and, and jesus said hey listen i own everything <laughs> why you try to do? and so many times what happens the enemy comes and he begins to define your life by what you own so nikki what do you mean what you own is the possessions in life and you know what i am successful because i drive this kind of car i'm successful because i live on this part of town our house is not in that bad neighborhood our house is where all the influential people live our the, and it's a possession step you are defined by what you own and if you realize this that listen before all these worldly things made any sense the bible says hey listen god says it's the pleasure of the father to give you the things of the kingdom of god and so more than the mercedes or more than the car or the right hey listen you are owner in the kingdom of god heaven belongs to you and heaven's resources including earth when the bible says a cattle on a thousand hill belongs hey listen it just doesn't belong to the father it belongs to you why because you are family so don't point to the father no it is your father it is your shepherd it is it's not somewhere out there no you are god the third trap of the enemy is what we call the popularity trap i am what others think i am i am what others think i am i am what others think i am and many many times we begin to live a life according to the expectations of others and i want to say to you get out of the <laughs> the bible says for all that is in the world what the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of the life is not the father but is of this world okay and so what we find in matthew chapter number 4 is is what the enemy is trying to do okay now i use different words i use words like performance possession and popularity because that probably makes more sense to you than the lust of the flesh because we don't know the the lust of the eyes and the pride of life but well, that's what it is it is the performance trap it is a possession trap it is a popularity trap and i let me go on to say something like this the lust of the flesh the antidote is the word of god this is what david said david said in psalm he says how can i live clean he says by hiding the word in my heart and i want to say to you each one that is listening to the sound of my voice the only way to live clean is to get in the word of god people say to me all the time well i don't understand the word well then hire somebody <laughs> as a tutor <laughs> you, know, you know like when you want to learn to play piano what do we do we pay money somebody comes we don't understand music we don't under and we pay them <laughs> you know to learn to play the piano we learn to uh, you know learn a different language we, you know we get coaching and so get somebody to teach you the word get your life soaked in the word of god 
you know especially in the pandemic stop listening to the foolishness of the news you know turn off cnn turn off the you know, stop getting your news from other sources go to god's word god's word will speak to you give you life give you direction of what to do it's amazing how many people they'll forward this facebook message and, and that instagram note and so and so quote i mean they're just they forward more of that then actually something that actually changes life which is the word of god the lust of the eyes number 2 the antidote is worship it's worship it's worship what is worship worship is not music okay okay worship can be expressed through music okay but that's not you know not all music is worship okay and not all worship is music okay <laughs> music is just one area that worship can have an outlet or or, or, or be expressed but worship is taking the core of our life okay and centering and putting priority on who god is it's seeking first the kingdom of god is giving worth it's not on your possessions i'm not defined by what i own i am defined by recognizing who i am in the kingdom of god that he's the shepherd i'm the sheep that he's the father i'm the son and so that's what worship does. it begins to have placement in your life where you begin to acknowledge the worth of who god is to you the third thing is the pride of life the pride of life the antidote is his will what do you mean by his will is what is it that god has for me to do in this situation now let, let, let me say all these three things are connected something can be part of god's word and yet not part of his will for your life so many times i say something like this there are many many decisions in life they're not just right wrong decision because what the word does it gives you the right wrong decision many times some decisions are what we call on the level 2 is it his will what is his will is what i call wise and foolish decisions and 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 and, and, and it, it's it's what pastor lip was talking about yesterday you know when he started in corinthian saying he said listen god has made everything open for us to eat and so there are no restrictions there is no right and wrong you want to eat pork go ahead and eat pork you want to eat this you can eat this but please understand it might be right but is it wise <laughs> and so you got to now implement the will of god and say god what is your will in the area of health what is your will in the area of job so you can have two jobs and, and both jobs are good but, but but they might be right but one of them is his will and so you got to learn to implement the will of god and so i want to say to you today listen we are in a war we can't entangle ourselves with thinking like the world we can't constantly be trapped with trying to perform we can't constantly be trapped with thinking that is the possession is the degree you know it's amazing when i travel especially to the eastern parts of of the world when i go to india when i go to china when i hong kong the eastern parts i mean when people want to hand out their their, their so called a business card you know their name is like you know this big but after the name there all their titles are like this big you know i am phd master of this blah 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 why because their identity came from what they do what they have achieved it has not come from who god sees them to be and so they get trapped same thing happens in the world same thing happens in the church we get after titles we get after positions we get after you know now if i make more money people respect me if i climb up the ladder of success and i'm no longer just a believer i'm a hatum kind of title people will respect me and we start doing stuff to have some sense of identity to have some sense of respect some sense of awe. it has come from all the wrong sources and when i say wrong even from the even in the church it has to come solely of your identity in who god sees you to be and so what happens the enemy comes in and he sets a trap he sets a trap now i, I want to say something to you very quickly <laughs> you know when uh, you know there are different types of trap for example uh, when they want to catch animals for example um 
uh, there's a rat trap if you want to catch mouse especially we have maybe mouse around the house here there something like that you know we put a, a trap we put some cheese on it you know and to catch a mouse and then they have what they call a monkey trap now please understand you cannot use a rat trap to catch a monkey okay a monkey trap is different and so listen every trap is custom designed for you that means when somebody wants to catch something they use a trap that will only work for that you are using a rat trap why because you want to catch a rat you are a monkey for catch a monkey you know and then so in the same way satan this is what the bible says that satan forms a trap or we use another word a weapon in this is the word form why does he use the word form because he actually studies your life he studies what ticks you off what will cause you to stop going from ch- going to church what will cause you to from stop from tithing what will cause you to stop from uh, obeying god what will cause you from 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 walking away and backsliding and he forms that weapon and so please understand it will only work on you and not your neighbor it will only work on you and not your spouse it'll only work on you and not your children why because it is custom designed he has done it based upon research of your life it's almost like i like to say something like this you know for example in america we have what they call fbi you know federal bureau of investigation or, or cia and what they actually do is this that they when they see a, a suspect they study their life why does he have two phones where does he have bag? who does he meet they they study in the same way the satan studies your life and forms a trap and let me tell you something when the mouse looks at the trap it doesn't see the trap it sees a nice cheese platter and that platter becomes <laughs> the trap of his life and so can i tell you something every trap is designed not to be seen by you and so you cannot see the trap why because it's custom based on the research and that's what the bible says that jesus sent the disciples or how two by two why so that the other person can protect the other person because the other person can see and many times i'm sure you've done it like this you probably say something like this why is that guy doing something like this can't he see no he can't <laughs> why because it's covered with things like a cheese platter is designed but everybody else can see and so you've got to learn to have relationships in your life that will protect you and as i bring it to close and my time is coming to an end i want to just say this to you that listen the trap that the enemy comes you know many times he starts with just giving you a negative impression about god that hey listen god god you know that's what satan did with eve you know what did he do he said listen god really doesn't want you to have this. god really doesn't want you to know this thing and he try to give a negative impression uh, he, gave, he the enemy comes and deceives you regarding approaching god you can't approach god like that lies about change he said you know listen your change is not permanent your change is not permanent lies about acceptance hey god will look at what has happened in your life look at what you did you will god will never accept you listen i want to tell you god will accept you god will accept you lies about cost what does it cost to follow god he lies about self sufficiency hey you'll always be needy in your life listen no god wants you to thrive let me say one more thing and as i close with this there are some things that the enemy deceives the church the bible says something like this the church is always envy is always strife is always division why because the enemy has come in and distorted people's identity their intimacy with god and their inheritance when that has happened suddenly they walked away and backslided and i want to say to you, each one listening to my voice doesn't matter what place you are in life doesn't matter what happened maybe you made wrong decisions maybe some of you may be joining cuz your friend maybe passed you the link and say hey you need to listen to this and you say well you know what i've got stuff in my life i've got burdens in my life i've got sin in my life i'm trapped i want to say to you the bible says very simple call upon the lord 
and he will deliver you he will set you free and today doesn't matter maybe you are a person who knows jesus maybe a person who doesn't know jesus maybe you are a person you made a decision to follow christ and, and you backslid it maybe you are a person who your friend invited you listen doesn't matter where you are all you can do simply is this say jesus i need your help would you come into my life would you forgive me of my sins would you cleanse me would you remove the lies would you remove the bondages and set me free i want to follow you if you want to do that then i want to just pray with you very quickly maybe you close your eyes wherever you are and would you just pray after me say this after me say father i thank you for sending your son jesus jesus i thank you for your full obedience to god the father by coming by dying on the cross that you were buried that you were resurrected so that i can have not only forgiveness of sin cleansing from bondage cleansing from the lies of the enemy but i can have new life i can be part of the family of god and so today come have your way i cry out to you for help help me and deliver me help me and set me free in jesus name amen and amen